This is a demonstration of a wireless infrared worm-like bootloader for the RP2040. A computer worm is a program which automatically replicates itself and propagates itself across a network. And these sorts of programs are typically associated with malware, but what, I, what I'm going to demonstrate is a capability that deploys this worm-like behavior for a good application. And so what we're looking at here is two RP2040s on Raspberry Pi Picos. Uh, each is powered off of its own power pack, so these are two totally independent systems. And at the moment, each is running a program that's just blinking the LED on and off. The circuitry that you see beneath each Raspberry Pi Pico includes an infrared LED and an infrared receiver. So these two Picos can communicate with one another over an infrared connection. And I describe that connection in some detail in, in another demonstration video. So what I'm going to do is reprogram this Pico on the right so that it does something different with its LED. In particular, it's going to pulse width modulate the LED slowly on and slowly off. And I'll reprogram it through a custom serial bootloader that acts through this serial connection. So this is plugged into my computer, and I'll use this connection to reprogram this Pico. What I'll then do is unplug this Pico from the computer so that it's a fully standalone system, just like this one. And I'll have this Pico copy its own application code and send it over to this Pico, which will then start running that new application code. So in other words, what we're going to see is this Pico is going to clone itself into this Pico. So let me just do that. Um, so I have a demonstration program created, and I can run a Python script that will um, load that program into this rightmost Pico. Oops, hold on, i got to put it into boot mode. Put it into boot mode here. And then I can load that program onto that Pico. So you can see the LED on this right Pico has started flashing to indicate that it is absorbing a new program, and we can see the progress that it's making towards absorbing that program here on this terminal window. We're about 24% through at this point. Um, so this is going to continue to absorb this new program, and, and once it has the new program, it'll start executing it. And then what I'm going to do, like I said, is unplug this so that it's fully standalone and have it replicate itself to this Pico over here. So for the moment, this one on the left is just going to continue doing its thing. It has no idea what's going on over here on the right. Okay, so a new program has now been loaded onto this Pico. So you can see, instead of blinking its LED on and off, it's instead pulse width modulating it slowly on and then slowly off. And what I'm going to do now is disconnect this Pico from the UART connection. So this is now fully standalone. It's powered off of a, a big battery pack down here. So it's a fully standalone system. And what I'm going to do now is put this Pico into bootloader mode. For this demonstration, I have that transition to bootloader mode triggered by a button push, though of course it, it could use any trigger to, transmit to, uh, to transition into boot mode. So I've put this into boot mode. And then by pushing this button, I'm going to tell this Pico to clone itself to this one. So what we're seeing now is the LEDs on both Picos are blinking on and off. And that's to indicate the data is being transmitted from this one to this one through this infrared connection. Once this completes, what we'll see is the Pico that's cloning itself will resume normal activity. That is to say, it'll just go back to running the program that we programmed it to, to run. And we'll see this Pico start running the new program that it just received from the other one. So now you can see both Picos are pulse width modulating their LEDs on and off. So that is to say the application code from this Pico has been cloned to this Pico through this wireless infrared connection. And I'll demonstrate a few things. If I remove power from this Pico that just received that program, and then I plug it back in, it automatically detects that it has a valid program and it starts running that program. 
And likewise for this one. If I unplug it and plug it back in, it automatically starts running that program again. So what this is showing is we can program a single device and if we configure our other devices to make them receptive to such things, we can have that program on this device spread to other Picos. Now, to be clear, it's only spreading to Picos that have been configured to receive those programs. So I'll just mention that my, my motivation for doing this is that I'm working on a swarm robotics project that's going to involve hundreds or thousands of tiny little robots, each of which is controlled off of one of these little RP2040s. And in research of that variety, it's often the case that the, the speed with which research can be conducted is bottlenecked by the speed with which you can reprogram each of the robots in your huge swarm. And so this capability is supposed to hopefully remove that bottleneck. The idea is that instead of plugging in every robot in the swarm and reprogramming it, what we can do instead is program a single robot, put it back in among its peers. That single robot will, will reprogram a neighbor, and then those two will each reprogram a single neighbor of, their own, of theirs and so forth, so that in effect you get exponential spread of firmware updates across a robot collective. Um, the other interesting thing that I think this could enable is in, in the transfer of the application code from one Pico to another Pico, we could in principle mutate that program. So that is to say we could run small evolutionary type algorithms on the machine code. So on the actual compiled program, we could do small mutations. Now, um, I'm not sure of, I'm not sure the, how much utility that actually provides, um, but it's kind of interesting to me because that feels, that feels kind of biological because evolution in our case occurs on, you know, the, uh, our DNA sequences. And it would be kind of interesting, I think, to emulate something like that for these devices where we're doing, um, evolution on their quote unquote genetic material on the actual compiled program. Um, I'm not sure if that could lead to anything interesting or not. Uh, the real utility of this, like I said, is to try to spread programs quickly through large collections of robots.